to a hero of mine who's in the Senate who believes the way that we do. He understands that the authority of government still, as the founders intended, rests in we the people. And so I'm going to turn this over right now to Senator Mark Ovenshane, and I hope you'll give him a warm welcome. introductions I've had in a long time. I was in Roanoke with a great group on Saturday and I told them that you know, in the words of, way to go Roanoke. <laughs> President Teddy Roosevelt used to say when they call the roll in the Senate, the senators don't know whether to answer present or guilty. And I tell you, we got a little of that going on here in Virginia too. So it's great. <laughs> Not all of us, please, please. Well, it's great to have you down here in Richmond fighting the good fight. This is a fight. It is a fight for the future of America. It is a fight for our children. It is a fight for our very freedom. And it is impossible to overemphasize what is at stake here in Richmond and in Washington. So God bless you for getting on the buses early this morning and coming down to visit with me and frankly with others who need your visit a lot more than I need your visit and I hope that you can carry this message across the the way through the halls of the state capitol you know, this is a message this is a fight between those who believe that we need more government what do you think no! and those who believe we need less government and I tell you, I talked on Saturday to this group in Roanoke about the Peter Paul principle. You heard that before? A government that bases its policy on robbing Peter to pay Paul can always be assured of the support of Paul. What do you think of that? You know, if you watch national TV, if you watch these guys, you know, Chris Matthews and Keith Oberman and Rachel Maddow. You know, they've heard something. They've heard that there's some people out here who are angry and who are fed up. And I'm here to tell you that the voice that they are hearing is the voice of Peter, who is sick and tired of being robbed in order to pay Paul. voices of people who have said, I have been taxed enough and it is our job here in Richmond and in Washington to hold the line on taxes. What do you think? And spending. Cut the spending. You know, what they're also hearing is that there are a lot of people out here who understand that if I work a nine to five job, that it's darn near noon every day before I stop working to support Uncle Sam and start working to support my family. That's just wrong. There are a lot of people whose voices are being heard that are saying, I should not be paying more in state, local, and federal taxes than I'm paying for food, clothing, and shelter combined, which is the truth. That's what we're paying right now. And we've got to put a stop to it. They need to pay all the taxes they got me paying now. Amen, brother. We have a fight going on right now over how to fund essential government services here in Richmond. Now, there are some essential services. Yet, the voices who complain about cutting spending too far ring hollow to me when I compare some of the decisions that are being made right there in the Capitol about how to allocate our spending. You know, I sat there early in this session and watched as we passed a bill. Now, this is small, but it's just one of these ridiculous examples that comes to mind. We passed a bill while we're complaining about cutting salaries for teachers or cutting money for law enforcement. We passed a bill that's going to require every school system in Virginia to rewrite its driver's education curriculum in order to teach 
fuel efficient driving. Let's just tell the kids to open the windows and turn off the air conditioning and let's tell our legislators up there to hold the line on taxes. Thanks for coming to Richmond. Let's keep fighting the good fight. God bless you. God bless the guy.